Two weeks ago, Stormers lock David Mayhazen announced his retirement from all rugby due to compli complications related to concussion. The towering lock decided to walk away from the game at the age of just 24 on, of, on the advice from the Stormers medical team after consulting numerous specialists. He joins us now to chat more about his journey that saw him own 23 Western Province caps and eight caps for the Stormers, the last of which came in the United Rugby Championship encounter with Connacht in Galway. A very good evening, David, and welcome to Newsroom Africa. Good evening. Thanks for having me. Uh, so, David, it's been two weeks now for the uh, now that the announcement is in the public. How do you feel about it? I'm uh, still obviously sad to have walk, walked away from the game. Um, Come to come to terms with the the reality of it, um, but obviously still sad that uh, my career came to such a short end. Can you just explain it to us? Because there was a concussion in that Connacht match, uh, and you still had concussion symptoms. I understand a couple of days after that, and that's when you were advised to go and see a neurologist. Can you just take us through the steps and the advice that you got before making this decision to actually retire? Yeah, so the, 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 the advice was basically just to see the specialist, just to ensure that there was going to be no long-term consequences down the road, basically make sure that I could go continue with my career with uh, peace of mind, knowing that um, I would be fine when I'm 50 years old, 60 years old. Um, and then after consulting a couple specialists, they, they all came to the same conclusion that um, I'd had too many concussions. Um, and that if I wanted to maintain my quality of life when I was older, then I needed to stop playing now um, before there was any permanent damage. How many concussions have you had in your career? Ten. Ten concussions. So, I mean, you get knocked on the field every time that you play or you go in for a big tackle, but when do you know that it's actually a very serious concussion? I think... Uh, yeah, there, there's there's many degrees of seriousness. I mean, obviously the most serious concussion is if you're knocked out, if you you black out and you you lose consciousness. Um, fortunately, I, I only had uh, one of those in my career. Um, but I think any any rugby player who's experienced a concussion will know it's 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 a feeling where you feel a bit out of place, um, and you just you can tell something's not right. And then it's obviously up to the player to speak to the the medical the medical staff at their union or in their team and make sure that they go follow the the appropriate channels to uh, make sure that they get back on the field as quickly but as safely as possible. David, where did your consciousness come around understanding that with repeated concussions there could be long term brain damage? It's, it's something, obviously, I think every rugby player has thought about at one point or another during their career. I think for me, it's always been it's always been something at the back of my mind that I've been aware of because I have had quite a few concussions and it was something that I just needed to have peace of mind going forward in my career. So I wanted to make sure that everything was going to be okay. And so spoke to the team doctor who, who then advised that I go see a specialist if this was the concerns that I was having. And I, I would like to think that m my brain is one of my biggest assets. So it's something that I want to use going forward in for the rest of my life. And so hopefully I still can. David, do you think that this is something that people have become more conscious about uh, because there has been so much more research going into what he, the, the long-term effects of head injuries in full contact sports actually is, because this is not really something that people were openly able to talk about because there was no research a couple of years ago. You know, it's definitely, it's definitely come to the front line of contact sports now. People are very aware of it. There's lots of research being done into it. And the, the medical staff at all the unions are fully equipped to handle all of basically if this happens to anyone. So there's, there's a lot more open discussions about it. There's a lot more information that's being passed around. And there, there's as much being done as possible to limit the effects of concussions and head injuries in contact sport. Well, let's take a look at what the effects of head injuries are in full contact sports and what it actually does to the brain. Take a look.
Rugby, American football, ice hockey and boxing all have one thing in common. Contact sports which can cause severe impacts on the bodies of sportsmen and women, including their brains. It's known as concussion, which is basically a shaking of the brain in the skull. When the impact occurs, the brain hits the bone wall, sometimes doing so several times depending on the severity of the blow. In 10% of the cases, the concussion leads to a loss of the athlete's consciousness. At the moment of impact, a huge number of brain neurotransmitters are stimulated and react at the same time. This overactivity causes an overload in the nervous system, an electrical storm which short circuits the nervous system through the body. All muscles relax and the athlete collapses. In 90% of concussions, the athlete is stunned, the brain swelling. There are several consequences. Firstly, post-concussion syndrome lasting from a few minutes to several days results in headaches, fatigue, confusion and disorientation, memory problems and anxiety. In the longer term and in the case of repeated concussions, athletes may suffer from chronic traumatic encephalopathy, also known as ETC, a combination of Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease. Symptoms can include severe migraines, hearing problems, severe depression and suicidal thoughts. Many professional boxers develop the symptoms of this type of pathological dementia, as do almost all former professional American footballers. Rugby players are also at risk. David, what would you say was one of the biggest effects that, or, that you had because of a concussion that really made you quite worried? I said it was my mental health. It was I was aware that my mental health wasn't at the, the the standard that I wanted it to be. So I I basically just wasn't feeling myself, um, and as a result, yeah, that which which was probably as a result of the concussion. So that that I would say would probably be the worst symptom. Uh, would you say it's kind of like a little bit of depression, mild depression, or something like that? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, you only 24 years old, which I suppose is what shocked a lot of people that you were retiring um, at your age. Do you feel that enough's being done to keep youngsters safe? You've had 10 concussions in your young life. Do you feel that enough's being done uh, at the junior levels to protect players from concussion so that they don't get to 24 years old and having to deal with 10 concussions already? Definitely. I, um, I mean, I've gone, I went through the, the, the ranks at the senior level with Western Province and I played rugby my entire school career. And I can, I can say without a shadow of a doubt that everything that can be done is being done. There's, there's lots of education around prevention, as in the, the use of gun guards, the strengthening exercises. Coaches have to take courses to make sure that they are aware what to do in the case of a concussion and to prevent concussions. The, the, ta the technique when entering contact is all around pre preventing head injury and, and protecting the player. So I think, unfortunately, in any contact sport, there's going to be casualties. Um, and unfortunately, I was just one of them. Um, but in terms of the sport as a whole, and especially in South Africa, I'm not sure what it's like in other countries, but I've seen the, our, our work off the field on and off the field is remarkable to to make sure that players are as safe as possible. There was the Curry Cup match where uh, Roscoe Speckman uh, went in for quite a, a heavy a heavy tackle, and he blacked out. Uh, the assistant coach of the side said that the referee should have actually stopped the match right there and then and you could actually see Speckman get up and and kind of uh, try to get the ball and he fell and it, it was quite difficult just as a viewer to watch for yourself as a player that's had to deal with concussion what did you make of that yeah I think obviously it's not something you want to see in the sport um, I think obviously it's as a player if, if something like that happens to you, your 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 immediate response is to like help the team to try and basically get up and continue. Um, and obviously Roscoe was was trying to do everything for the team possible. I think 
obviously it's it's sad when you see something like that happen to a player, but luckily I think the medical staff got to him as quite quite soon after that and were able to look at him look at him and he was removed from the field. So I mean there's obviously hindsight we can we can say we should have done this and that, but I think at the end of the day the important thing is that Zav Roscoe was all right and um, it's it's unfortunately part of the game of rugby is that there's, when there's when there's such heavy collisions like that sometimes someone comes off second best. Do you find as a rugby player it's quite difficult to have these uh, mental health discussions in a sport where uh, masculinity and ferociousness are really valued? I think I think obviously the people. Want to, there's this idea that rugby players are of uh, the butch masculine guys, and I think there's lots of there, there's lots of emphasis on raising awareness around mental health and the 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 well-being of players, which is fantastic that we're moving forward in that direction. Um, I think it's it depends on the individual. Some people are very comfortable talking about their emotions and their their well-being, and others aren't. So I, I don't think it's it has anything to really do with the sports. It's more to do with the, the individual, and some people are very comfortable talking about these things and others aren't. Yeah. And uh, those people that say uh, rugby is a man's game, we mustn't make it soft, we must still have very hard tackles? No. First of all, rugby is not a man's game. Rugby is for everyone. Rugby is for, for men and women. It's a, it's a fantastic sport that can be enjoyed by all. And I think it's, it's, a, it's a sport that... No, even if you, no matter what we do, there's always going to be heavy contact in the sport. There's always going to be massive amounts of collisions. And so I think World Rugby and South African Rugby is always obviously trying to look after the welfare of the players and make sure that the players are looked after. But no, no amount of rules is going to change the fact that it's an incredibly physical and violent sport. Um, incredibly beautiful, but it can also be ferocious at times. So... Obviously, I think the, that the, the rules and regulations that people are trying to bring in can maybe have an effect on some form of the contact, but no matter what you do, it will always be a very heavy, fast-paced sport with lots of contact. And David, what does the future hold for you and your involvement in the game, even if it's from the sidelines? To be honest, I haven't really given it much thought. Um, I mean, I think there's always, there's always the possibility of coming back and being involved in coaching later on in my career, later on in my life, um, but at the moment it's it's still very fresh. Don't really know what what comes next in terms of rugby, um, but yeah, who knows? Maybe we'll see. But for, for the moment, no. At at the moment, no. Not really planning on being too heavily involved in the foreseeable future.